So, hi, and welcome to this webinar about the new Writers Access Group from BBC Writers Room. Uh, my name's Lawrence Clark, I'm a screenwriter, I'm a former participant in the Writers Access Group, and I'm also chair of Triple C Dank, which is an organisation of deaf, disabled, and or neurodivergent creatives working in the industry to make it inclusive and accessible. I'm joined today by the fantastic actor Ruth Maisley, the equally fantastic actor Rose Ailing Ellis, and the wonderful screenwriter Jack Thorne. And we also have Jess Loveland from BBC Writers Room. So, Jess, would you like to kick us off by telling us what the Writers Access Group is? Absolutely. Thanks, Lawrence. So, in essence, the Writers Access Group is a creative training programme designed to support and accelerate the professional development of deaf, disabled and neurodivergent writers. Historically, writers from the disabled community have been overlooked by the TV industry. And so the Writers Access Group was set up to improve access and opportunities and to create meaningful representation of disability on screen. We've been missing out for years on a wealth of stories and experiences, and we want to empower and support disabled writers to confront and to change that. So we want to find emerging writers who have a real burning desire to write for TV. We're looking for writers with an original voice, with a fresh perspective, and a really keen interest in the medium of television. So the programme's designed uh, to identify and support the next wave of deaf, disabled, and neurodivergent writers, to hone their craft, to deepen their industry knowledge, and provide a pathway for talented writers to grow and to progress within their careers. Um, during their time with us on the programme, writers will take part in a series of workshops, discussions, case studies, and all the selected writers will work with a professional script editor and the BBC Writers Room team to develop a brand new and original spec script. This is going to be the third Writers Access Group that Writers Room has run. And the application window is open right now, up until the 18th of April. All details on how to apply are available on the BBC Writers Room website, as well as more information about what the programme involves. You don't need to have a credit. You don't need to have industry representation in order to apply. All you need to have is a sample drama or comedy drama script of 30 pages or more, be over the age of 18 and resident in the UK or Ireland. And of course, you have to have that, that real passion for TV writing. And yes, I think that's in a slightly long-winded nutshell, but we're just really excited at this point now to, to get reading everybody's work and meeting some brilliant, brilliant new writers. Uh, I feel obliged to point out that the people who have been on the course before, we found the writers access group to be a bit of a mouthful, so we call it WAGS. <laughs> yes. <laughs> For some reason, I say to my wife, I'm going out with the WAGS today. <laughs> <laughs> it really annoys her. <laughs> yeah. to, to us, it's the WAGS. <laughs> yeah, you're all WAGS to us as well, yes. <laughs> So, um, I think, are we going to lose you, yes, now? Okay, bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you for uh. <laughs> uh, First question to everyone. So why is it so important that we have disabled people working behind the camera, writing scripts, as well as in front of it? Shall I go first? Yeah, go first. Okay. I think it's really, really important to have um, 
therefore disabled or neurodiverse people behind the screen because as an actor, sometimes I'm acting and I get a script and it's not an accurate way of how deaf people will behave or how deaf people culture is not being put in. Um, and I feel like sometimes I have extra job of adding it mm -hmm. in myself, changing the script and then asking the director, trying to explain my whole culture and then try and film it all in what, half an hour? It's impossible. This is the work that needs to be done right from the beginning. If you want to involve us, you need to involve us from the beginning. <laughs> Brilliant. Grace, are you, am I talking in you? You talk. You go first, boss. Always you first. Never <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say that there's a, there's a, we've got a societal problem and we've got ableism in our society. And I think television is incredibly powerful. And I think if you can get authorship writing TV, then you can really confront that ableism. And if we if we have it running right through so that we've got these wonderful stars at the end of it, but we've also got writers, producers, makeup artists, all these different people expressing themselves, then that will mean that this authorship will, will confront our society and, and, and lead to some meaningful change. And yeah, I think for me, um... I've, I've noticed a lot in my career that people often think that disability representation is just what you see on screen and it's not it's so much more than that it's it, it has to happen behind the camera as well um it's not enough to just hire a deaf disabled neurodivergent actor it, you you have to put the work in behind the camera as well because the they go hand in hand. The more people you have behind the camera who have disabilities, the more that you're going to see more disabled people and more disabled stories being told um, on screen. So I think representation has to be 360 degrees. It can't just be what you see on screen. Yeah, and then a lot, if you ask a lot of disabled people, are they happy how they represent it on TV? And I'm sure the majority of them are not good there yet. So the problem there. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask Ruth and Rose, um, as actors, um, what are the disabled characters, the roles that you're burning to play, but don't get the opportunity to at the moment? Go for it, Rose. What? What are you? Well, I'll, you go first in case I take one of your roles. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, probably the other way around. You take mine. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the, 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 the thing, I would when I got that question, it's quite a difficult one because mm -hmm. a lot of time I don't get the choice of choosing what character I want to play. I always get what is deaf basically, I see what is deaf. Um, so I think there's a privilege that a lot of actors take for granted that they can see what character they want to play. But if I have a choice, I would like to be evil. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you'd take mine, I want to play a baddie. <laughs> Or, or um, I did a bit more layered character rather than just death. Oh, my whole identity about being deaf. Mm. You know, but, it's too much. It's complicated. Maybe a James Bond villain because they're usually disabled in some way, <laughs> but they're just not playable. Yeah, I think what Rose yeah. said is, oh sorry, go ahead, Rose. Um, <laughs> um I think going off going um just building on what Rose said, um we often we, we've never had disabled, you know, prominent figures told on screen. So we've never had that, oh, I would love to play that one day. Um so my my hope in my career is that I can bring some 
disabled people from history to the for forefront who we've learned about but who the younger disabled generation might not know about and can see on screen and it will be them that then say I want to play that one day so um, I completely agree with what Rose said about there being a lot of privilege for non-disabled actors who don't have to think about that they've got an abundance of characters that they might want to play whereas we have had to kind of be a lot more limited and my hope in my work is that I can really open that up for the next generation of young people coming into this industry. Yeah. Great. Uh, Jack, um, one, three, this is the third time. <laughs> It's going to support up and coming deaf, disabled, and neurodivergent writers to develop their own new specimens. So, how important is that for new screenwriters? Hugely. It's the most important thing. We are, and, and it's, a, it's one of the good things about being a writer, we are only what we produce. Uh, and and we need stuff, we need fruit and veg on our stool in order so that people are interested in us. And um, if you've got a spec script, then you've got something to show people. And so without that, these schemes, these slightly empty schemes that are like, you know, we're going to have you meet lots of people and talk. They are, they are, you know, they, they, there's no substance to them. That, that, that you need something at the end of it. And, um, and it's really wonderful that WAG3 is supporting that. Really. Um, so, yeah, I hope if we say it often enough, well, <laughs> the next gen generation will take it on as well. <laughs> um, so, uh, we all work in, in the TV industry. Do you think there's more of an appetite now? for telling our stories? I think so. I, 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 think, I think there's been a massive change from the work that people like Dark and Rose have done and, and so many other fantastic disabled creatives who have really been plugging away. I think um, I, I'm very much, I'm an eternal optimist, an incurable optimist, and I always say, we celebrate every little victory and we are a lot further on than we were this time last year. But um, I still don't think it's enough. I think it needs, that there needs to be more um, of a push and a more of a willingness from the people at the top of the tree to really commit to telling deaf, disabled and neurodivergent stories um, because it has to, you have to infiltrate every level, you know what I mean? It can't just be one thing. It has to be a whole, a whole commitment from the entire industry. That's what I feel. Yeah, I still feel like there's still a fear out there. Mm -hmm. um, you see, definitely more disabled people on screen, which is great. But they always have a really small role. They never really, they never even the supporting acting. Um, whatever that is, the fear of oh, people don't have enough experience. Or is it stunning? I don't I don't know what it is, but there's still a lot of fear out there. Um it's changing and people are accepting it, but it's very slow. It's very like slow. a baby step. Um and it uh, it, it feels like we are constantly trying to prove to people that we can do it, we can do it, but we don't get given the chance to show them that we can do it. Mm -hmm. But it's so slow. But you only start off really small and then um, also, I've noticed um, no experience. A lot of disabled people don't have experience because we haven't been given the opportunity. And then, therefore, it's like um, catch 22. No experience, mm -hmm. but then we don't get experience. So it's like, what do we do? I mean, I'm, I'm the old bastard here. And um, I, I can say that uh, mm -hmm. it, it, the change in the length of my career has been quite momentous. And but it needs to push on further. You know, we've got on this call, we've got a Doctor Who lead. We've got uh, a lead, a Shakespearean lead in the West End. 
those are huge victories, those are huge, huge victories. And and it is wonderful that that's happening. Um, uh, but but yeah, let's keep pushing. Let's keep pushing, pushing, pushing. And yeah. um, and it's not just about you know the the, the thing that uh, Lawrence and I in particular are involved in this tap scheme. It's not just about uh, um, you know employing more people. It's also about changing the spaces we work in. And mm -hmm. and and that is a much slower process, and it's going to take a lot longer. But it's so vital that we make our spaces accessible and our working practices accessible so that disabled people can be genuinely included as we go forward. Yeah. So that old picture that 20 years ago, I probably wouldn't be here doing this. Mm -hmm. I think you would because you're extraordinary, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, um, uh, it, it, you may not have been given the same opportunities. Mm -hmm. You're right. And um, and it, it, it took till uh, then Barbara Allen for me to do a disabled drama with a full budget. And that was only two years ago. Um, everything else has been sort of what everyone's got back down the back of the sofa where disabled programming is, disabled programming is concerned. And, and um, you know, and it's hugely important. I, I, I get the crazy thing is, is TV devours stories. It's always looking for new stories, new angles, new, new ways to tell stories that have probably been told before. And to you know, having more disabled as neurodivergent characters in them make those stories new. <laughs> because with that comes a whole set of other circumstances that impact on the telling of the story. So, you know, there's a, a big opportunity here to tell new exciting and original stories. Um, we just need people to be a bit braver. Absolutely. Um, uh, in terms of, uh, here, I guess I was thinking more about kind of long-running series or existing series. How do you think our drama and comedy will change once we have more disabled writers working on them? Well, the, the change the change would be massive, and it is in the long runners. You know, the long runners, the the the, the numbers they get, the audiences they get for it, are, are so huge. And so, when you've got Rose on EastEnders, or when you've got Liz Carr on Silent Witness, the exposure to the possibilities of the storytelling, the the exposure to the to the to the nuances of the disabled experience, um, uh, are huge, and it takes. And it takes disabled professionals, you know, in both cases, there was a disabled professional involved in the genesis of that of that moment. And it takes disabled professionals to 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 bring these characters in and to make these characters full and to make these characters interesting so that when they arrive, they have power to them. So, yeah, it's the long runners. I think they're they're the vital they're the vital cog in, in all of this. And then hopefully you extend out so that, you know, that. There's a there's a nine o'clock BBC show with Rose or Ruth in the lead um, uh, that that's that that runs for eight parts and is is a happy valley. You know that 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 would be the next the next sort of big thing. And I think it's inches away. We're inches away from that. But but yeah, that that that's um uh yeah long runners long runners. We need them and we need good writers behind them. Yeah. And I think when you have disabled people writing, they have they will put in detail that nobody else would know unless you actually experience it. So all these detail is what's missing when it's not a disabled person writing it. They just get the basic, but little tiny detail is what make it more special. And it's more fun to play it. Yeah. I, think as, I think as well, I think um, going back to what Jack said at the beginning, um, TV is really powerful. So to have a disabled, deaf or neurodivergent person playing a lead role in a in a series, that's that that's people absorb stuff without realizing they're absorbing stuff. It's helping tackle that internal internal ableism that we all have. 
like I I love watching characters that have disabilities that I don't know anything about I can only talk about my lived experience as a physically disabled woman um so I love learning and seeing characters who are blind visually impaired deaf neurodivergent you know all of those things where um myself as an actor and a writer I wouldn't be able to write accurately without learning from people around me so I think it's really exciting to um show how different disability is for everybody but also have it just as part of your everyday tv watching um because people it will change the way people feel about disability without them even realizing it um, i think every so often a, a tv series comes along that kind of grabs the nation to the uh -huh. uh, 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 duty where well, well, that happy valley at the moment you, every so often something comes along where everyone watches it and then everyone talks about it at work the next day <laughs> and that's what I want to see I, I want to see one of those what to call the moments absolutely involving disabled characters because because that would have such a knock on effect to a whole load of other areas of life i think and, and the thing is fair people might be uncomfortable but like oh this is a bit different just a bit like old for me to watch but then as you see them more and more and more you get used to it and then eventually you become like oh it's a part of our life a part of our mm -hmm. society but is that fear is that the fear of where that fear come from why is society a bit frightened of seeing something that's a bit different there was a scope survey that said 36 percent of people didn't think they knew a disabled person 36 percent that's a huge that's a huge amount and they're wrong because they're yeah. watching people with disabilities in their lives that they just don't know about but those for those 36 percent that box in the corner of the room has got so much power and i think we have had a water cooler disabled moment and it was rose doing the silent dance in in strictly um it was that that was a moment which just got the whole the whole um the whole audience talking about it, the whole country talking about it we just need to do the same in drama now <laughs> I think as well, it's worth saying that um, putting more disabled people and stories on screen, that, because there's so much that's not been tapped into as well as the whole thing of intersectionality, uh, you know, black disabled people, uh, gay disabled people, you know, there's there's, there's so much that um, disabled stories are often one thing, they're often, often white, often um, one particular disability, and you've got such a wealth of rich talent within our community that have got stories out there that, that need to be shared as well. Uh, that, that neatly brings me on to the next question, Ruth. So what are, what are the stories about disability that still need to be told? Uh, yeah, I, that's a big thing for me and, and, and um, even when you're casting things, the majority of, of, of people you see in castings are, are white disabled people. So um, but for me, there's there's such rich stories within that we can tell if we look at the intersectionality of our own community. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like that's a story that is missing because um at the moment in the non-disabled community, there's a big conversation about mental well-being, about racism and sexuality, but um, people don't realise that disabled people also experience these things on top of where of being disabled. Where are they stories? And history, history is full of disabled heroes. And I hope that we, um, we get the chance to tell some of those disabled hero stories it's hard 
there's a lot of doors closed to that sort of thing. And I've been I've been banging on it for a while. I know you've been banging on it for a while, Lawrence, and I know you're starting to bang on it now that you're a writer too, Ruth, which I still resent you for massively. But um uh 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 that uh that that you know that but but by keeping banging on that door, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we can get those stories through. To be fair, Jack, Ruth always was like that. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. But she didn't tell me it for a long time. I didn't know that about her for a long time. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I, I, I think as well, um, uh, as someone who um, uses social care, uh, and the care system uh, has, you know, support every day of my life. I just don't see those relationships on TV. I don't understand why, because they are so complicated and so intricate and interesting. Yeah. Um, to, yeah, apart from the royal family, disabled people are the only sexual society that have people paying to be in their homes, helping them. And, uh, and that always just seems a hugely interesting thing that's, uh, that, that's completely overlooked at the moment. There, there, there's so many stories out there. When you, when you start to think about it, um, and they need to be told. Um, so I wanted to finish by asking you, um, what do you hope will come out of this next round of WAGs, the Writers' Access Group? What? Oh, sorry. I just hope that we see more diversity in the ability community in the writing. That's what I feel like next. I would love to see, I would, I would love to find a black deaf writer. That would be so cool. Um, because then it's, it's a story that I can't tell, but they can, and then all work together. I think we need more diversity in our ability writing group. I would like the next Sally Wainwright, Jim McGovern, Michaela Cole, someone of that uh, of that ilk. Uh, I would, I, 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 and I, you know, superstar talents are emerging all the time, and I would love, I would love a superstar talent from within the disabled community. Yeah, I think for me, I would like to. Um, I love the fact that this is open to people who don't have representation, who don't have um, the experience. I started in this industry purely with, with my acting experience, went as far as being Mary in my nativity in primary school. That was literally my acting. And um, I've had lots of people who've taken a chance on me, Jack in particular being one of them. And um, I, I love the fact that opportunities are opening up to disabled people who who haven't had that experience and so for me it's seen the confidence grow when you're given the opportunity to just show exactly what you can do so that that for me is a big thing even if um you know disabled people who, who we get that they, they I, I hope for longevity that is my waffling way of saying i hope for longevity for people all they need is a, a, a is a step in the door and once they've got that i i, I hope I wish for very long careers for those people. Yeah, and I hope the next beer with people will work with, and like a training round, because a lot of people based on its spirit. So, yeah, you know what I mean? Mm. Yeah. I, I mean, speaking personally, having done Max, one of the great, um, the great things to come out of it, and I know the first group said the same, was that we have our own WhatsApp group. To having like a, li a little group of deaf, disabled, neurodivergent writers um, 
to bounce ideas off. Um, yeah, getting other people to read your stuff and reading other people's stuff is so, so important um, to, 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 to your own development. Um, and just having a peer group of people who are who are doing the same thing, going through the same thing, um, to share those experiences uh, uh, and support each other. And uh, yeah, but writing can be quite an isolating experience, and it shouldn't be, and it mustn't be, because in my experience, it's always better when it's collaborative. Um, 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 when you, um, when you get feedback and you share, and and hopefully this this will do the same. I I totally agree, and 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 for me the it was the Royal Court Young Writers Program. So, but it was a similar sort of thing that I had the realization that those above, those I was staring up at, that I was desperate to be like, I wasn't going to get a, a a reader that would that would really, really go into my work and read all the terrible stuff I was producing. But from within the writer's programme, there was another writer called Laura Wade, and I sent her everything and she sent me everything. And we both made each other better. And I think she is one of the most important teachers. Thankfully, she was much better than me. So actually, she really was. But, but she was one of the most important teachers in my life. And she was the same age. She was at the same stage. And we just we just had each other, and and you know that cohort creating that cohort feeling is so vital. Yes, yeah, yes. So that's all the questions. Does anyone have anything else burning to say before we wrap up? Um, if if anyone feel a bit nervous about becoming a writer. Don't be nervous, just do it, please. Come on, come join. Just write everything you can. No, I'm, always looking for one. I'm always looking and I can't find anyone out there. So I need more. I think that's really good because um, like Jack didn't know that I was a writer for a long time, so I didn't tell anyone. <laughs> Because I was terrified and I was like, I'm gonna be shit. I can't send Jack Thorne. I still to this day. I haven't set Jack on any of my writing because I just we wrote, we wrote together. We wrote together. I meant, I meant my yeah, of course that. Of course we yes. I I I remember that bit. I just mean in, I read I I still to this day the thought of sending like Genevieve or Jack or you know my work still terrifies me. But and my agent has sat in so many meetings telling people, Ruth's a writer too, and I'll keep going, what are you telling people that for? Don't say that. <laughs> shush, shush, shush. Um, but now, it's taken a while, but even though that's what my degree was in, I, it's taken a very, very long time. And we all have massive imposter syndrome, but you, I'm learning very much now that that is a waste of everybody's time and you just have to kind of hold hands with your imposter syndrome and just walk into the room anyway. So um, yeah, definitely going up, back in at what Rose said, the nerves are going to be there and they never go away, but just still do it anyway, because it's so important. How yeah. into the writer's room with you, Ruth? Um, <laughs> uh, that, that's when I found out you were a writer. <laughs> <laughs> No. I know in first he was like, what's she doing here? Yeah. Who's this? And finish the scripts. Finish the scripts. Yeah. Finish your scripts. Yeah. Start yeah. it and then finish it. Uh, and then rewrite it. And then rewrite it. <laughs> Forever. Forever. Yeah. Okay, um, well, it's just left for me to thank Bruce Bladley, Rose Ellig Ellis, and Jack Thorne. Thank you so much for doing this today, and thank you for being our WAG's ambassadors. Yeah. But thank you for having me in this room. I feel, I feel very nice. <laughs>